Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. Today, I'm talking about a cool shooter that shows that the best man for the job is often a woman. Or two. It's Troubleshooter. Troubleshooter is a shoot-em-up developed by Vic Tokai and released for the Sega Genesis in 1991. You play Madison, a mercenary who is hired to rescue a kidnapped prince, whose disappearance could cause an international incident. But she's not working alone. Her best friend Crystal is her partner in crime. After a brief and amusing cutscene, you see the two ladies head off to track down the prince in their red convertible, which is packed with weapons. In the garage, before you start each stage, you can pick between four different special weapons. Lightning Storm shoots electricity at random. Tidal Wave is a vertical line of energy that you control. Blizzard sends circles of energy spiraling outward from you, and Avalanche is a wall of missiles. Each weapon is better suited to some levels than others, but you won't really know that until you try them. What makes Troubleshooter unique is that rather than flying some kind of spaceship, you're doing your shooting with not one, but two girls with hover packs. You control Madison, who always shoots to the right, but you also have limited control over Crystal. You can make her either shoot in the same direction to increase firepower, or in the opposite direction to take care of enemies approaching from behind. The way Troubleshooter handles your special weapons is also a little different. Rather than having limited uses, your special gains charge over time, and you can use it any time it's at full. This meant I felt much more free with its usage throughout the stages, as opposed to trying to save it for bosses or other tricky situations. However, you have to be careful not to try to fire before charge is full, or it will reset. You can find the usual types of power-ups as you go by destroying cargo containers. These include things like increased firepower, speed, health refills, or occasionally one that slows down the speed of things around you. The game advertises having five stages, and it's around the same length as most other shoot-'em-ups of this era, around 40 minutes for a full run. It is also on the easier side. You start out with four health on normal mode, and extra health is fairly abundant. And though the sprites are quite large, and together Madison and Crystal take up a lot of space, you only need to worry about not letting Madison get hit. Crystal is pretty much impervious to damage unless Madison dies. If you lose all your health, the game is over, and you only have two continues to work with. There are three difficulty modes. I played through on normal, but tried the others as well. As far as I could tell, some enemies shoot a few less projectiles on easy and a few more on hard. They didn't seem all that different. The first stage's shopping plaza is a nice, easy introduction to the game. It's straightforward and nothing, including the boss, is overly dangerous. Stage 2's underground hideout is a rather large jump in difficulty as you're moving down into the ground the whole time, and the walls are often crawling with circular saws and other things that will hurt you. The game doesn't really get much harder than this, though. You'll come up against new kinds of obstacles and enemies that get more interesting, but not necessarily more difficult. As you seek out the missing prince, you'll also chase after an airship, travel inside the airship, which is full of machinery and pistons, and then, having found the prince, make a daring escape through the skies. The bosses, though they're all very visually distinct and fun to look at, don't provide that much of a challenge. They go down fairly easily and have relatively well-telegraphed attacks. My favorite of all of them was in the airship Colossus. Here you have to take out its engines while the screen moves around you and enemies spawn. It was just a bit different than the usual big bad. I really like that this game has a few tricks up its sleeve, which I'm about to spoil now. If a shoot-'em-up even can be spoiled. After you rescue the prince in Stage 4, he'll join you in the fight. Now you'll have three shooters flying around. You can still control Crystal's direction, while the prince will move in the opposite direction as Madison. Unfortunately, from this point on, you can no longer use your special weapon. 
The game also has a bit of a false ending. You return the prince to his father, Crystal flies off to do her own thing, and then the villain Black Ball strikes again. You'll need to continue to a sixth stage, but you're on your own this time. At least at first. Now here's where some design issues are highlighted. In this final stage, enemies are constantly moving around you. And without Crystal, if they're to your left, you just can't do anything. You have to wait for them to be in the right position so you can shoot them. Black Ball himself can only be hit in a weak spot, which is rarely revealed and also results in a lot of waiting. This makes for a bit of a disappointing lead-up to the final fight. This problem does also arise in the main stages. At times, you're moving right to left, and while you can use Crystal to shoot ahead, then Madison feels a little useless. There were also some segments in a few stages where not a whole lot is happening. This is particularly an issue in Stage 3. Sometimes you're moving around the airship, and while there may be some intermittent environmental danger, there's nothing to shoot at. These parts are a little slow moving. When it comes to the game's presentation, it's utterly charming and has a lot of nice little touches. The character sprites are big and detailed, and everything has an anime feel. When you get hit by something, Madison will exclaim, ouch, while a speech bubble appears above her head. Each of the stages looks completely different and have good use of colors and parallax scrolling. The game is peppered with short, amusing cutscenes that tell the story and give the characters a little more personality than they'd usually be afforded in this type of game. These scenes are rather over-the-top and silly, especially when the fourth wall-breaking villain is involved, but I enjoyed them. I knew I was really going to like this game when the first boss appeared and laughed and blew kisses for an inordinately long amount of time before the battle started. The game's soundtrack is similarly a lot of fun, vacillating between goofy-sounding music in stage introductions and urgent, drum-heavy beats while you're in the stages themselves. Troubleshooter is often compared to Dirty Pair, a series of Japanese novels and manga which features two trouble consultants who have a tendency to leave a trail of destruction in their wake. A few months after Troubleshooter came out in North America, it was released in Japan as Battle Mania. The cover art for the Japanese version definitely conveys both the tone and appearance of the game better than the North American artwork. In the art here, Madison and Crystal look kinda like floating 80s aerobics instructors with laser guns and a desperate need for some scrunchies. This cover probably wasn't the most effective in getting people to pick out the game amongst all the competition out there. I really enjoyed my time with Troubleshooter. Though there are a few segments where things are a little on the slow side, it's honestly nice to play a shoot 'em up that's on the easier side for a change. Plus, the way that you get to control two or even three characters at a time is very fun and quite unique. The game is incredibly charming, with really well-done narrative scenes between its stages and a silly sense of humor. This would be a fantastic option for someone who's looking to get into shoot 'em ups but also provides a nice change of pace for fans of the genre. If you want to see more Genesis shoot 'em ups check out my review of Musha, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.